So you clicked on this video because you want to learn Huntress and get better with her. I'm here to hopefully give you some advice, some tips and tricks to improve how you play Huntress. I've played Huntress for hundreds, if not thousands of hours over the last seven years, and I'm going to share what I've learned with you guys. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. I will provide chapters in the description so that you can click around and come back to this video to study more later on. First off, we're going to start with the basics of Huntress, which is quite simply put, a fairly slow killer with a honing hat it that you can throw across the map. As per the recent buffs to Huntress, she now has seven base hatchets to throw before she needs to reload, as well as a 10% quicker wind-up speed added to her base kit, and a recent but not so recent change to her reload speed, which is now three seconds of an animation instead of four like it used to be. She's one of the simplest killers to start playing, but one of the hardest killers to master. And above everything, it is going to take a lot of practice to build up that muscle memory to really get good with her. The first main tip I'm going to get into is the terror radius and the map pressure of the killer. The Huntress has a base kit 45 meter lullaby that you can hear around the map. 45 meters being 13 meters larger than any other standard terror radius from any other killer in the game. Therefore using stealth perks and add-ons that she has to her disposal are not as recommended. They won't be as useful. However, these stealth perks could be more useful when playing on indoor maps such as Larry's or Hawkins. As a result of the larger lullaby terror radius, survivors, especially especially at the higher level, tend to leave the generators and the objectives that they're on earlier on than normal. And pairing that with the fact that your Huntress herself has a slower movement speed than most killers means that her map pressure is not as strong. So this is where throwing hatchets tend to come in very handy. The ability to throw a hatchet across the map gives her so much more map pressure and can be used in many different ways. Simply just throwing a hatchet across the map to try and hit a survivor isn't always the good play, but you can throw hatchets up and across the map, maybe hitting on or close to a generator which could probably scare the survivors or make them think that you're heading towards them which could maybe make them avoid that generator for the time being and relocate. As a result of her lack of map pressure because of her slower movement speed it is more beneficial to be playing on maps that are outdoors and are a lot more open such as the cold wind maps and the auto haven maps too. Leading into this second point which is about patience. This ties in well with the first tip. As you have a limited number of hatchets at your disposal before you need to go away and reload, it is essential that you don't waste all of these hatchets during a chase. Now, a lot of people that have previously done tips and tricks videos have always recommended to maintain patience. However, I would argue that you should try and learn how to play the Huntress first and be throwing as many hatchets as you can to try and get used to the hatchet hitboxes, which we will talk about later on, as well as the trajectory of the hatchets that you're throwing so that you can learn to throw above different loops and above different areas in order to get more proficient at throwing hatchets at a middle to long range. This will obviously take time to do. So I think learning patience is not something that needs to be optimized at the beginning when you're learning Huntress for the first time. However, once you learn to get a little bit better and further understand the Huntress's ability, I think then you need to be more aware of the amount of hatchets that you're throwing as well as where you are on the map when you throw your hatchets so that you're not too far away from a locker when you need to reload. Sometimes it is better to leave a chase mid-chase even if you have injured that survivor in order to go and get some hatchets so that you're not taking too long trying to catch up to them at your 110% speed. The third topic we're going to talk about is hatchets themselves. You need to learn when the right time is to just use your regular basic swing attack or when it is a better idea to throw a hatchet, as well as when the right times are to reload. Around every single map in DBD, there are different lockers. Dependent on the maps that you're playing, however, can be more difficult and require you to move further out of the way in order to reload. As a result of this, it is crucial for you to understand when the right time is to throw a hatchet especially if you've only got one or two left in your inventory. It may be tempting to just simply swing an M1 at a survivor if they are close to you. However, it is more beneficial for you to throw a hatchet at them as it is quicker for you to recover from that hatchet throw and catch up to them sooner than it would be to M1. This can be easier said than done, however, as some survivors are very good at duking the killer close range, so it may take an extra hatchet or two to be able to hit the survivor. I would recommend that if you're coming to the last couple of hatchets in your inventory, to maybe be a little bit more reserved when you're throwing them. Make sure that you're a little bit closer range, or try to guarantee that you can hit the survivor with the hatchet when you're going to throw it, so that you don't completely lose the map pressure 
or have to drop chase if the survivor ends up duking it and vaulting a window, for example, and running away that way. The fourth topic we're going to talk about is looping. As a result of Huntress having an ability that can throw a hatchet, you're able to throw hatchets over pallets and over certain tiles and different loops, which means that you don't need to be respecting the pallets as much. There are some loops that survivors will run you around that you cannot throw over, and therefore sometimes it is just better to eat the pallet. And by that I mean just take the stun and then break the pallet afterwards, because it will save you time in the long run when you're eventually coming back to this later on in the game. A lot of competent survivors will try and fake the idea of dropping the pallet to try and make you wind up your hatchet in order to give them a little bit of distance by running around that loop again, which is also a good way for the Huntress to be wasting time during a loop. So maybe sometimes during these loops, it's good to M1 instead. On the topic of winding up a hatchet, you slow down your movement speed when you are holding a hatchet, and it takes three seconds when holding a hatchet before you hear the ring sound effect, which means it throws the hatchet once you let go at the fastest speed it can go, which is crucial for learning when you're throwing a cross map. The fifth and final tip that I'm going to talk about is to do with hitboxes. It is very, very crucial to understand and this will be the sort of thing that you learn over time as well the hitboxes to the hatchets that you're throwing now when you throw over certain loops dependent on what the loop is it could be a rock that you throw over you can throw above the rock that might seemingly be slightly taller than the survivor behind it however you can throw it at just the right height where it will go above the rock and also dip enough to hit the survivor behind it. This can really catch survivors off guard and is quite difficult to master. And like I say, will take a lot more time to get used to as well. The best way to try and perfect this is simply practice makes perfect. However, once you understand the hatchet hitboxes, you can also use this to throw hatchets in areas of the map that survivors might not be expecting. For example, just before they run around a corner of a loop, you might be able to throw a hatchet right on the edge of that loop that skims the edge of the tile and it might clip their ankle or barely even look like it's touched them at all, but it will confirm as a hit. A lot of survivors hate this when it happens, myself included, but it is something very good to learn, and a lot of confident Huntresses will use this a lot of the time. As a result of it being difficult to maintain map pressure with Huntress, using aura-related perks are always beneficial, and a few of them that I would like to highlight are Bitter Murmur, Barbecue and Chili, Discordance, Darkness Revealed, I'm All Ears, and Lethal Pursuer. Any combination of these perks will allow you to reveal the auras of certain survivors, which will give you a big, big edge on the map, especially when you're trying to throw a longer range hatchet, as they won't really be expecting a lot of the time for a hatchet to be coming that far across the map. However, it's also just a good standard informational perk to allow you to keep tabs on where survivors are, so that you don't get too carried away with looping one person without knowing where the other three are. Iron Maiden is also a very good perk to use, as it increases the speed at which you reload as well. It's also recommended to bring a slowdown or two, as Huntress's early game map pressure can be quite weak. Bringing something like Corrupt Intervention or Scourge Hook Pain Resonance can be used to slow the game down over time and hopefully allow you to maintain your pressure without too many gens popping at the beginning. Some good add-ons that I recommend running for the Huntress are the Begrind Head, which basically makes survivors suffer with an inbuilt sloppy butcher for hatchets for up to 80 seconds, which can be very, very useful to slow the game down. I use this add-on quite frequently. Glowing Concoction is also very useful. When you hit a survivor with a hatchet, it reveals their aura for five extra seconds, which can allow you to track them a bit further, especially if they're hiding behind a vault or a certain loop or a tile, even on indoor maps if they're trying to get away, just so you can track them a bit easier. Infantry Belt and Leather Loop have both recently had add-on changes happen to them, so that they now grant 2% and 3% haste respectively for five seconds when a hatchet is hit. These add-ons, in my opinion, are not very good. They used to grant extra hatchets, however, where they increased the Huntress's base kit to seven hatchets, they've taken these out so that you cannot use a 10 hatchet huntress and never need to reload. Wooden Fox can be useful for sneaking up on survivors, however, because of the lullaby, it is a bit more difficult to use unless you're on an indoor map. Babushka and Grass Braid are also very good add-ons that can be used together to decrease the time it takes to wind up a hatchet. Another notable good add-on is Oak Haft, which I frequently run, which decreases the hatchet throw cooldown once you have thrown a hatchet by 20%, which allows you to get moving at regular 110 speed a lot quicker than normal. Shiny Pin can also be a good add-on, as it allows you to be able to move slightly faster when you're holding the hatchet. A lot of Huntresses tend to do this to maintain map pressure or to keep a survivor within a certain area. This also encourages you to be a little bit more patient with your hatchets, as you maintain a slightly faster movement speed, which means that you can make up a little bit more distance than you otherwise would if you weren't running this. So to conclude, practice really does make perfect with Huntress. It's the sort of killer that is going to be quite easy 
ability to pick up and understand how to play her. But in terms of perfecting her and really understanding the ins and outs of the killer and how you can apply map pressure in certain areas and be able to efficiently win most games, it's going to require a lot of practice. I would honestly recommend throwing hatchets galore until you understand how the hatchets work and then be able to bring in a bit more patience to your gameplay so that you can guarantee that some of the hatchets will hit. I think the Huntress has one of the best skill expressions in the game and being able to hit some cross map hatchets, orbital hatchets and other very skillfully positioned hatchets through little holes in walls and through different vaults and loops really really add to the enjoyment on this killer. So make sure you enjoy yourself when you play her. Don't be afraid to give the crazy hatchet attempt a go because ultimately you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And that wraps it up for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like. Be sure to leave a comment down below if there's anything that I've missed out. I also did a Xenomorph tips and tricks video so if you are interested in that be sure to check out that video too. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.